Hey guys, welcome to the program. Today I'm going to talk to you about some things I learned while I was writing Python code. And we're going to learn about how we can interact with Domo Jupyter workspaces via API. Now I've done a ton of videos on the channel about authentication, about working with APIs. So if you're brand new to this topic, go ahead and look at some of those. I'll link them in the description below. But this is different because the Domo Jupyter APIs actually use an environment that's not normal Jupyter. And so we aren't using normal APIs or normal API authentication. But don't worry, I am going to walk you through some of it. Now, I am going to use Domo Library as a foundation because in addition to showing you how to interact with the Domo Jupyter APIs, I also want to show you a little bit about writing Python code using classes and um, object-oriented programming. Let me start by saying I'm not an expert on that. I just have a lot of sweat, blood, and tears in this space, and that's how Domo Library was constructed. It's using classes. And so a lot of the learnings I've picked up along the way are represented in the code base. Again, links to that GitHub repo if you want it. So let's get to it. Um, this first bit of Python code, all that does is it just reads in my environment, uh, sorry, my env .txt file, which is storing my Domo username and password. If you're not familiar with the .env and .env values um, library, go, go look it up. There's no reason to store passwords and usernames and clear text in notebooks that we're showing on the internet. Just don't do it. Use .env. Cool. As a starting point, though, um, just going to look at authentication. Standard Domo authentication allows me to exchange a username, a password, and a Domo instance for a access token. So if I run the function, or sorry, if I create an instance of the full auth class called full auth, I can run a method called print is token, and I can also generate my auth header, which has my token. Um, it will allow me to do all those things. So let me restart my notebook here. Right. So again, um, I create an instance of the Domo full auth class. I ran the method called print is token, which just validates that I can actually get a token from um, Domo community that my authentication, that my credentials are valid. And then I have a method called generate auth header that is printing out xdomo authentication plus my token. Again, any normal domo API, if I pass this authentication header, I can interact with domo. So I can create data sets, I can run data flows, I can update, upload data sets, I can change user properties, right? All of the stuff that I do with the undocumented APIs has to have xdomo authentication in the header. And the whole reason for this video is because Jupyter Workspaces is different. How is it different? Well, let me monitor my network traffic. Let me monitor my network traffic. I'm going to save my notebook here. All right, here we go. I'm looking for a put request. Here, here's my put request. All right, let's look at this URL. So this URL is Domo community, fine. But now I've got this Jupyter prod one. Prod one, it refers to the region that AWS is running in or this Domo instance is called prod1, it's referring, running in some region like US West 2 or something, .domodatascience.com. Okay, then I've got user Domo community 1893 da 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 da. This bit here refers to my Jupyter workspace, right? I can have a workspace, you can have a workspace, everybody can have a workspace in Domo community, but within the platform itself, a workspace is referred to as a user, and that's how I get to the right workspace. Then, once I get to the workspace, now I can interact with the APIs where I can say, okay, I've got some content that I want to send a put request to. If I look at the payload, okay, 
This is the definition for my page. This is some metadata about that page. Lovely. That's my put request. Let's look at my authentication header. In order to send stuff to the APIs, instead of using XML authentication, they made the decision to use the header authorization token, some sort of user token. That's how I authenticate to Domo Jupyter. Long story short, this full auth workflow won't work. This full auth class doesn't do what I need it to do. But instead of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, I thought to myself, I wonder if I can extend my full auth class to receive these parameters, receive this user token, modify the header that I generate so I can still recycle some of my code for interacting with Domo Jupyter and potentially interacting with data flows and all of that stuff on the normal side of things. That's our mission, to learn how to extend the Domo full auth class to interact with some of the Domo Jupyter stuff. So how do I get those values? Well, if you're working in Python, you can always type os.environ if you import the OS library, and you can see some of the environmental variables. So I can see, let's see, what can I see? I can see that my domain is Domo Community. I can see that my Domo host name is the community spelled out with the complete URL. Um, where is here? Service prefix lets you know this is how I get to my workspace, right? Remember my workspace is referred to as a user with a specific ID. And the service, here it is, prod one, right? Remember we were talking about this being hosted in AWS. That's how I get to the right service. All right, so I need those two things, my service URL and the service prefix. So how can I work with that? Um, your user token, like previously we ran a function called get auth token or something that returns my user token, my auth token. I don't know how to get a user token. I don't know what API Domo's hitting under the covers. So we're just always gonna copy paste that from network traffic like I just showed you. To get my service location and prefix, I'm going to pull that from the environment. For the service location, I'm going to use URL parse to get the network location, and the service prefix is just the service prefix. Cool. Known, understood, moving on. Um, a cool trick that I learned from one of my coworkers is if I use the input function, I can create a prompt for user input, which is great if the user token is always changing and I want to make sure that you've passed in a good user token. Or if I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to type things in all the time, I can add or use the user token that's already been stored. Just to demo it, I'm going to type in ABC, which is not the stored value. Here I'm going to use the stored value. And I can see, aha, my user token is ABC. My service location is the whatever was pulled from the environment. I want that user token, so let me run this block again. Save that blank, blank, blank. Okay, that's the right user token. Cool. What are we building toward? We have, we now have all of the parameters that I need, or all, yeah, all of the parameters that I need in order to construct the URLs that I need to interact with Domo Jupyter APIs, and I also have a user token to handle authentication. Now all I've got to do is take all of that information and slam it into some sort of an author authorization class so that I don't have to manage these attributes every time I want to hit a URL, an API. So how can I extend? This is the question. How can I extend the Domo full auth class with some new properties? Or how can I mix in properties from two different classes together using inheritance or composition? All right, here we go. 
this is this is this is what we showed up for. This is where we actually learned some Python. Um, let me reset some of the. Well, we won't go. Okay, fine. So the end result will be to create a new class called Domo Jupiter Full Auth. It is based on the data class class, and it's also based off of our familiar full auth. For the purposes of our demonstration, I am going to kind of comment out mixing in this optional class here. All right, we're just going to focus on the interaction between Domo full auth and Domo Jupiter required. Note the order that I add them in matters, and we'll talk about that in a second. But what do I want full auth to do? I want it to take all of the properties of full auth and add the properties of Domo Jupiter required. And because I'm specifically dealing with full auth as opposed to developer auth or client ID and secret auth, I want to have a method that will convert a full auth object into a class, into the Domo Jupiter full auth class. That's why we're using a class method. Class methods usually return an instance of the class or in the code that I write, a class method can just return something totally different, but it does not return the, an, it does not return the class. It's not based off of an instance of the class. Whew, that might not make sense, but we'll talk about that. All right, so what am I passing in? Full auth and the new Jupyter parameters to return the object. And just to prove that this all kind of works, because frankly, I don't always know all the time if my code works, I'm going to write a function called full auth dot underscore class dot name. My question is, is what type of object is full auth? And full auth is a instance of domo full auth. Great. Like to convert that into Domo Jupiter full auth. So we wrote that method full auth, we pass in the full auth object, we pass in the Jupyter notebook specific parameters. I run this code and what do I get now? Okay, I have created an instance of Domo Jupiter full auth. Very exciting. Right, the conversion process works. The class method returns an instance of the Domo Jupiter full auth class. Great. Um, but it's important to understand that Domo Jupiter auth still has the methods available. It still has the methods available from Domo full auth. So I can run um, Domo Jupiter auth. Uh, get off token, and that will get my auth token. I can store that value as token, and I can also run generate auth header, which will return this beautiful auth header like we saw earlier. But again, what is interesting about this is I'm calling the method on the Domo Jupiter auth class, not a full auth class, right? We did, we did the class conversion already. This is interesting, but not helpful because I cannot authenticate to Domo Jupiter using XDOMO authentication. What do I actually need to pass? What I actually need to pass is token and user token. So I need a function that replaces the get auth header, sorry, the generate auth header function. I need to replace the definition of that method on Domo full auth. And I'm going to use Domo Jupyter optional as a new class method 
sorry, a new class to hang that method onto. Okay, so here we are. Here's my Domo Jupyter optional. I have created a method called generate op header that will return xdomo authentication and authorization. It's going to replace, right? I said earlier, order matters. Um, first, we're going to mix this guy in. Then we mix that guy in. Then we mix that one in. So it goes to left. This time, I have the optional mixed in. Notice that the generate auth header returns a extended response. It now includes the authorization piece, right? I have replaced whatever the definition of full auth, generate auth header was, I replaced it with the Domo Jupyter optional definition. In addition to that, I also have a post init function. Okay, what is a post init function? A post init function, notice how it has the two underscores. Anything that has a double underscore, it means that it is a, a method or a property of like the root class, of the data class. So every data class class will have a function called post in it. And maybe you defined it, maybe you didn't, but everyone has one. Just like every um, class method has a init function, right? Now it just so happens that the data class function has its own init that we usually don't define, but all other classes should have an init function. So what am I doing post initializing an instance of the class? That's what post init stands for, post initialization of the class. I am validating that I have a user token, a service location, and a service prefix. I'm validating that those things are true. And then I'm also running a function called test prereq. What is test prereq? Test prereq has the underscore, um, and the underscore means that it's calling a hidden function. Now, I just saw something I want to change. I'm going to move test prereq. I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm going to leave it where it is. Disregard. OK, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So what have we talked about? We talked about mix-ins. We talked about the fact that I can have multiple classes that have their own set of attributes, their own set of methods, and I can smash them together into one class. I didn't say, but should say that order matters when I'm doing this, right? The last one that gets mixed in will supersede or replace the method if it has been defined elsewhere. And we saw an example of that with get auth, generate auth header. If I use generate auth header from full auth, it doesn't know anything about Domo authentication, so it won't include the user token piece. But because I'm building a class to interact with Domo Jupyter, I needed a method that will give me authentication against Domo Jupyter, and that's why we have our Domo Jupyter optional to supersede some of the other functions, methods. Oh, that was a lot. That was a lot. All we're doing here is looking at mixing classes. We're looking at handling authentication in Domo Jupyter. In our next video, we're going to actually start building some stuff. So I'm going to stop this video now. Catch you in the next one.